Employees denied this man's order twice. When he showed up again, he left them lost for words. She didn't elaborate on why she refused to serve him. He had waited 45 minutes in line to be treated in this manner. As a result, he wasn't used to people refusing to follow his instructions or being scorned. She didn't seem to realize who he was or how powerful he was at first, but it was undeniable. When she found out, the speaker was anticipating her reaction. It was a day off for Alexandria, Carl Baker, a male veteran, that VA had initiated. He is ready to take a break after several 12-hour shifts and enjoy a relaxing vacation. He'd already completed the planning for his trip. He was about to sleep in, eat out, go sightseeing, and end the day with only a drink in his hand. However, things were not going as well as planned. Baker woke up to his dog jumping on his bed, the sun shining through his curtains, and time to eat. He got dressed, made himself a cup of coffee, and thought about where to have a nice brunch treat. He put his plan into action and started walking to a restaurant he'd never been to before. That was one choice he dreaded the next day. They began to regard him as a completely despicable person. For a long time, Baker has been shunned by the general public. He managed to keep his chosen profession hidden from his co-workers, but only a few people knew who he truly was. Baker approached the cashier through the door. While waiting in line, his hunger grew and he was barely aware of the crowd around him. His frequent meals had been reduced to two. On the other hand, Baker was fantastic in some ways, as he was well known for being a picky eater. He was very particular about what he ate, so he was confident that his efforts would bear fruit when he chose a meal. A 45-minute wait, he reasoned, would be enough to justify standing in line. He was way off the mark. Baker was a patient and dedicated person, even if he had to wait a long time to make a purchase. However, this description of that trait is far too long, and it should be done sooner rather than later. Baker was starving and eager to buy food when he finally made it to the cash register. The defeat that followed, on the other hand, would have broken him. Baker was greeted warmly by the cashier, who responded with a frustrated and impatient expression on his face. As if she hadn't had a good day, she was chewing gum. Nonetheless, he smiled as he placed his order. Baker was always looking for ways to make people happy, so he realized that not everything in life is rainbows and smiles. It does not, however, apply to this employee. Baker placed an order for food after learning that it would be impossible to prepare it. He was dissatisfied, but he realized he had other options. He was unable to use his alternate option, which he eventually informed the cashier of. He glanced at the list and finally requested the last item on it to complete the list. She continued with her previous response, rolling her eyes. This irritated Baker. He was simply wasting far too much time queuing for the food offered at today's discount prices. He wouldn't have had to wait in line if he had known they weren't available. Her obstinacy aggravated the situation. He also took a breather from his rage and began to wonder if there was anything else on the list that wasn't necessary. He was met with a disapproving glare from her once more, as if she telepathically thought that perhaps his question was stupid. Her behavior was extremely irresponsible, in addition to their deceptive advertising. He had a lot of things to say. On the other hand, he was able to sense her thoughts as if they were his own, she growled, Listen, mister, if you're not going to order, you need to leave. Baker exclaimed, That's it. Can I speak to your manager? He asked calmly as he remained seated. She walked from behind the counter to one side and yelled at someone in the back of the kitchen. Without saying anything, she returned Baker's blank stare, and a female appeared to answer his call. She looks Baker in the eyes and says, What's the problem here, sir? You're holding up the people behind you. Baker figured out what was causing the employee's bad behavior. He recognizes that this is not going to be something he enjoys at all. He took great offense at the accusation that he was the cause of such ludicrous lines. He patiently explained what had actually happened and how the problem he saw in his institution needed to be 
resolved by management. Her remark was, to say the least, unexpected. Then a female cook approached the register to tell the manager, you better pull me off the line because I'm not serving him, referring to Baker. He eventually decided to wait for the manager to act, but she began to laugh. Baker warned the manager that if they did not treat their fellow customers with respect, serious consequences would follow. Even after Baker's expectations, she flatly refused to follow Baker's advice. I understand that things didn't go your way today, sir, but that's life. Now you could kindly remove yourself from my establishment. I don't serve men like you, she scoffed. Men like me, Baker responded. What did she mean when she said men like him? Baker was drained. He wouldn't have been quite so nice now. He tried to speak with more authority in his conversation with her and assured her that he wasn't trying to harm her. Now he's interrogating her to clarify what she meant by men like him. But what she says next will lead to a clear understanding of retaliation in his mind. Her demeanor struck me as both cold and arrogant. I don't need to explain what I meant to anyone. Get on out now before you cause a scene, she begged. He was accustomed to people obeying orders, but not to those who disobeyed them. When others looked down on him, he was offended. She had no idea who he was or what power he possessed. It was obvious that she was apprehensive. He could tell how people felt about him even when he wasn't wearing his uniform. The method was found to be effective. Baker realized he wouldn't be treated like a senior citizen. As bystanders began to notice, he felt mistreated. He began to look around at the few ears and eyes that were paying him interest. As he came to realize in the restaurant, almost everyone was staring at him. His face turned red. He did not even recognize anybody there, but he began to wonder if some of the clients had identified him. They would certainly not even assume that, if they did, a restaurant would have the audacity to address him like this. Baker chose to leave the restaurant without saying anything else. He was disappointed, angry, and embarrassed by their actions which he could not let go unpunished. He would overlook the disturbing start of his day in the uniform that indicates addressing and beginning to serve everyone with respect and coming to terms with this awful experience tomorrow during normal working hours. What will their reaction be then? Baker returned to work the next day dressed in his police chief's uniform. He had a lot of things to do. He was concerned but vowed to himself that he would contact the restaurant and reveal his true identity. He can't sit still while watching them tremble in their boots. Baker decided to stop at the restaurant on his way back from some call-outs in the area. He parked his cruiser and pushed his way through the doors, lucky to have found the parking lot. His expression was stern. The aura of his appearance pervaded the entire restaurant. Baker was a big, burly man who exuded authority when he wore his uniform. They were all looking at him now for all the right reasons. He had approached with a smile on his face and with respect. The employees' faces brightened, as did the checkout person, who had become slightly more attentive. She greeted him with a friendly smile that faded as she became more familiar with him. The manager requested that the formalities for dumping be completed. The cashier made a shaky appeal to the manager. As a result, she began to walk to the kitchen's back door at that point and screamed. She appeared to be more conscious of her demeanor now. Baker stood with one hand on his waist belt and the other on a radio device. He was cast in the role for obvious reasons. He waited for her to arrive, especially as his radio call bleeped with officer notifications. However, another manager was on the job at the time. Baker's attempt to tell her something upset her, and she apologized right away. She also promised to publish an internal review of her co-worker's actions. After bystanders who were present reported the officer's mismanagement, the story made it to social networking sites for a brief time. Now was the time for the restaurant to make a statement. On being asked more about the officer's disturbing treatment, a restaurant representative did not try to deny the allegations. She informed the media that, as Baker had described, everything had actually happened. The restaurant was shocked that it was disrespectful to law enforcement officer and agreed to look more into the problem. 
but would that really be sufficient? An angry reader wrote, I don't know why the offended officer doesn't sue for $150,000. This is no different than the Oregon bakeries refusing to make a wedding cake for gay couple. Discrimination is discrimination. Another, on the other hand, took a more rational approach. We are working with the appropriate authorities and local police association representatives to get to the bottom of and resolve this matter as quickly as possible, the statement continued. We have made efforts to reach out to the police officer involved but have not yet spoken with him. We will continue to look into the situation and will take the appropriate actions after this review. Thousands of users responded harshly to the story, which went viral on Twitter and Facebook almost immediately, despite the establishment's desire to save face. An enraged reader stated, I don't know why the offended officer doesn't sue for $150,000. This is an awful behavior that can easily be considered a breach of customer rights. At once, another took a more principled-based view. If I were a cop, I'd be way less concerned about these people who are openly anti-police than I would about someone quietly harboring resentment and handling my food. Even though Alexandria Police Union Representative Pete Felthman praised the restaurant for its quick response and coordination, the damage had already been done when the restaurant rushed outside to place banners to assist law enforcement officers. Instead of exacerbating the conflict, he disconnected and thought Baker handled the situation perfectly. He was still surprised that such an incident occurred in Alexandria because police officers are known for their friendly interactions with residents and local businesses. None of Feltham's statements helped to calm the public's anger. Thousands of comments were left on the restaurant's Facebook page, grumpily informing them that they were completely boycotted and encouraging other customers to do the same. Following the incident, there was even discussion on social media about stealing from the restaurant. Baker, on the other hand, chose to keep his stance on this matter simple. Thus, he stated that he is not in favor of cancel culture and does not want to see criminal activity occur in the restaurant. He also warns against attempting to dissuade the establishment from supporting it. Take the high road, he said. The actions of a few do not equate to the actions of many. As a result, two wrongs do not equal a right. In response to a huge amount of critique, the restaurant concentrated its efforts on its promise. According to the Washington Post, a few weeks later, they made an official statement. In a statement, the company said that the views and actions of these individuals were inexcusable and did not reflect those of the company or the rest of the staff at the Duke Street location, the source said. We have concluded the two team members in question acted inappropriately, the establishment said, adding, we have the utmost respect for law enforcement officials and value the relationship we have built with the local Alexandria Police Department over the years. Baker was tracked down by the night manager and the restaurant to apologize for his and the three staff members' bad behavior and they plan to go out of their way to explain to anyone who will listen that they support law enforcement. The mayor of Alexandria, Alison Silberberg, was in a similar situation. She said she was appreciative of the company's full-throated apology for this unfortunate situation. But how would it affect other law enforcement officers? Well, your first response as a police officer is anger, the head of police said. These are tough times right now with our relations with everyone, and to have one of my officers treated in that manner unnecessarily, your first response is anger. Then you calm down a bit. A waitress intervened when she noticed a similar incident developing. Brittany is aware of the mounting frustration within her. She can't believe such an obnoxious individual exists. She hasn't requested it all along. These people have been attempting to persuade her to agree with them. She went to the manager only to be told to suck it up. What chance did she have of something like this happening to her? Brittany Spencer worked as a waitress for a couple of years and thought she'd seen it all. Almost every person came to Fond du Lac, Wisconsin because of Fat Joe's Bar and Grill. However, she didn't notice an elderly couple walking through the door at first. When they sat down, their gestures began to change. 
Brittany could tell it was going to be difficult right away. The couple slapped their faces in frustration as they looked around the restaurant as if they were stepping into their worst nightmare. This wasn't, reasonably enough, a Michelin star diner. The food, on the other hand, is great. Brittany brushed aside her initial observations. She assumed that her charming personality would be able to cheer them up as well. Despite this, she had no idea how completely incorrect she was. She approached them and also decided to offer the menus. There hasn't been a hello back since she started handing them the menus. The lady wrinkled her nose as if she had detected a foul odor. She stepped back, and when she turned around, she saw the couple laughing hysterically at another customer on the restaurant's edge. Their bile was focused on a frequent and also very friendly customer. The two were engrossed in their conversation, completely oblivious to the fact that Brittany was waiting for them at the next table. Brittany's ears were twitching, and she listened intently to what they were saying. She was completely taken aback when she finally heard what they were saying. How could they do this to someone they didn't even know? They went to ask Brittany what she thought of the other client as she walked up to them to begin accepting the request. Brittany was asked if she assumed it was as horrible and disgusting as they obviously thought, and she had to wonder why someone like that was allowed anywhere near the diner. Their wrinkled faces were filled with nothing but disapproving judgment. She replied to the elderly couple before walking away from them, Sorry, but I can't serve you, and I'm afraid I have to disagree with what you said. Despite this, she did not simply give up and ask her manager if the table could be assigned to another staff member. But things were about to get even more complicated. Her boss flatly refused, telling her that she had no choice but to suck it up or go home. Brittany realized she couldn't keep serving tables with people who had such negative attitudes towards people, let alone to try and make one of her regular customers feel uncomfortable. As a result, she snatched her bag and stormed through the door, but the consequences of her actions were about to be revealed. After work, Brittany decided to post about what had just happened on Facebook. Many people praised Brittany for trying to defend herself, and some even named the restaurant where the incident occurred. Brittany exhaled deeply as she turned off her laptop and tucked it into her bed. She reasoned that everyone was on her side. The next day, management informed Brittany that she had been fired. She grabbed her laptop and went straight to Facebook after exploding with rage. She informed everyone about the dreadful development. The reactions were fierce, but I'll always choose my morals over money. See ya, she pointed out. However, the restaurant's owners hold opposing viewpoints. According to the restaurant's co-owner, Brittany was fired because she refused to do the assigned job. She said that she overheard a few discussions with which she disagreed during her time in the industry and just got along and did her job. Their neutral approach, however, did not calm the stormy waters. Brittany and many others also stated that it turned a blind eye to allow racism to occur with little or no response in your establishment, which she compares to simply saying one's own nasty words. Brittany, on the other hand, was convinced that she had made the right decision. What are the current dinner conditions as well as core values? Please feel free to leave a review on their Facebook page, Fat Joe's Bar and Grill, Brittany concluded her viral Facebook post. The Facebook page was temporarily taken down after receiving far too much hate, but it has since been restored. Shortly after the incident made headlines, the diner was forced to call the cops due to a few personal protests. After all, they claim that the incident has had little impact on their daily operations and will continue to operate in the same moral manner. Brittany acted professionally enough to politely request a table change, which isn't an unreasonable request. The manager's initial response, suck it up, reveals their attitude towards their employees' convenience. What if you could refuse service to customers who try to impose their views on someone who wants to fulfill their request? And what would they say to Joe and Whitney Wallander, the owners?